In a recent video, I talked about creating seamless patterns using Adobe Firefly in Photoshop, but the big question is, what do you actually do with those patterns once you create them? Well, today I'll show you how you can take a pattern of any kind and apply it onto clothing so you can change your fashion styles or create mock-up type designs on clothing with ease. For this photo, step number one is going to be changing the color of his shirt to be more of like a dark green blue color. I'm gonna do that with two different layers, first using a hue saturation adjustment layer and then a color fill layer to add a little extra color to the shirt. Now, as you might have guessed, to add a color to this shirt, we need to first select that area. Before recording, I did that with the pen tool, which you can learn more about in a previous tutorial on my channel that I'll leave linked below. But since I already created that, I'll just go up to select and load my selection. With my selection active, I'll now add a hue saturation adjustment layer from the adjustments panel. And then since this shirt is white, I'll click on colorize so that we're going to add color to an area that doesn't actually have any hue. Now we can refine these sliders as we would like to update the look of that color, but I have some very specific settings that I'm going to input. If you'd like to follow along, you can do the same. For the hue, I'm going to type in 190. For the saturation, I'll do 10, and the lightness will be minus 30. The problem with this color is that it looks way too flat and none of the highlights actually pop out around this adjustment. So with the help of blend if we can remove the visibility of this new color from the highlights so it blends in nicely into the shirt. To access blend if I'll double click on the hue saturation adjustment layer to access layer styles. And within the blending options, I'll go to the blend if sliders. And since I want to blend our current layer into the layer beneath it, which is the image with the shirt, we need to use the underlying layer slider. Going to the highlights, since that is what I want to remove, if I click and drag this over, you'll notice that the current hue saturation adjustment gets removed from the highlights as I bring this slider over. But to blend this in and not have it look so patchy, I'll hold Alt or Option and click just outside of the highlights point. I'll now continue to drag out like so until I'm happy with the blend of this color. Once you're happy with the adjustment, click OK. And now turning that on and off, we have a nice new color on the shirt. But I wanna take this one step further with a color fill layer to add a little bit of a richer color to the shirt. To create a color fill layer, I'll go to the bottom of the layers panel, click on the adjustments icon, and go to solid color. In the color picker, I'm going to use this hex code here. Just type in this value if you want to follow along here and then click OK. Now, obviously this doesn't blend into our photo in any way, so we need to do two different things. We need to isolate this color so it only fits within the shirt. And then we also need to blend that color into the details of the shirt, such as all of the threads within the fabric. So to begin, since both of these layers are related, I'm going to shift click both of them and press Command or Control G to group them. Opening up this group to make my life easy with all of my future adjustments being isolated onto the shirt, I'm going to duplicate the hue saturation layer mask to this entire group. By holding Alter Option and clicking and dragging on that layer mask and placing it on the group, now any layer within this group will be isolated to the shirt. From there, I'll click back on the color fill layer and change the layer blending mode down here to multiply to blend that color into the shirt. But just like we had the problem with the hue saturation where the highlights aren't showing through and the color looks too flat, we need to once again call upon the help of the blend if sliders. Once once again, double clicking on the color fill layer to access layer styles. We'll go to the blend if sliders and once again, edit that highlight point of the underlying layer slider. Holding alt or option and clicking outside of that point, I'll now drag over like so to remove that color from the highlights. To further refine this color, I'll just continue to drag that highlights point out until even the shadowy areas of the shirt look nice and realistic with this color blend. 
If I zoom into the photo here, you can see how all of this color is applied nicely within the textures of the shirt, which is what Blendif is really great at doing. It's just removing this color or making it less visible from the highlights and midtones around our subject shirt. With this good to go, I'll click OK. And now we can look at our before and after here. So we have successfully changed the color of our shirt with two different layers. Now we're ready to go and apply our pattern onto this shirt. Since we have this group created with the layer mask, all of our future layers can be added within the same group. But to make things less confusing, I'll shift click on both of these inner layers and press Command or Control G and call this to Shirt Coloring. Now let's add our pattern with a new pattern fill layer. Going to the adjustments icon, I'll go up to pattern and then choose the pattern that I want to use, which is this one right here. If you would like to have the exact same pattern I'm using here, it is available in the description below alongside the free lesson cheat sheet. But with that pattern chosen, I will now just change the scale until I'm happy with the size of the design here. I'm happy with 40% for the scale and I'm not gonna change the angle. I'll click OK. Now I want this pattern to also be white, so I'm gonna change the color of it with another color fill layer and a clipping mask. Going to the adjustments icon, I'll go to solid color and then change this to white, which is the color I want to apply for my pattern. I'll click OK. And to isolate this to only the pattern layer, making sure the color fill is directly above the pattern fill, I'll right click and go to create clipping mask. Now this changes the color of our pattern and we're ready to blend it into our photo. To blend this pattern, we need to do a couple of different things. One part of this process is that we need to use blend if so that it blends differently in the highlights and the shadows. But then the second part is that we need it to be distorted slightly to make it look like it's flowing naturally along our subject's shirt. Unfortunately, we can't easily make those adjustments when we are using a pattern fill layer. So we need to duplicate and rasterize this adjustment. To do that, we need to hold command or control and click on the color fill layer and our pattern layer. And then we want to duplicate and merge them. The keyboard shortcuts for this will be command or control J to duplicate those selected layers and then Command or Control E to merge those duplicated selected layers onto one rasterized layer here. Because of the layer mask that we have on the group that this layer is within, if I look at just this single layer, you can see that we have the pattern only fitting around the shirt, which is exactly what we are wanting. With this duplicated layer, I'll call this to rasterized pattern and then shift click both of the underlying pattern and color fill layers, press command or control G to group them, and I'll call this to backup pattern. That way, if you ever mess up, we can start back at that group again and restart the process from this point forward. I'll disable the visibility of that backup group, and now we can work on our rasterized pattern. The first step is to make it blend a little bit more naturally into the shadows and highlights of the photo. To do that, once again, we're going to use Blend If, so double clicking on that rasterized pattern layer. We're going to first blend in the highlights with the underlying layer slider. Holding Alt or Option and clicking just outside of that point, I'll drag inwards to refine the visibility of this pattern in the highlights and then move the starting point here. I'm gonna bring this over so it's pretty much not visible in these really, really bright areas of the subject shirt. We're just gonna pretend like it's totally blown out. We'll then do the same thing around the shadows. I'll hold Alt or Option and click on the shadows point or just outside of that point and then drag outwards to blend this pattern into the shadows and make it look a little more natural along the folds and things. We can click on the starting point of the shadows and bring that up as well to darken up some of the pattern in those shadowed areas of the shirt. With that complete, both our shadows and the highlights have been refined. I'll click OK. And now we're ready to add our warping adjustment. To apply our warping adjustment that will make our pattern look like it's naturally flowing over the subject shirt, I'll press Command or Control T on that rasterized pattern layer and then right click within that layer and go to Warp. To start out, you can try one of the warping presets. Sometimes the bulge option looks pretty decent on clothing because it makes it look like it's flowing forward from the shoulders. But if it looks too intense, we can 
bring down that bulge amount by dragging on that slider here. But what I find more useful is going to the grid settings and going to five by five for this photo. This will give us a bunch of different anchor points that we can click on and move them to distort our shirt. We can also twist the pattern as we would like to naturally flow over the different corners and angles of the subject shirt. So for example, let's go and warp this area here. I'll just bring this up, click on this anchor point, twist this over because it's kind of in the crease of his shoulder. Do the same thing over here twist that one in and we'll do what we can with these base anchor points to begin with. Once you've worked on the default anchor points that are available within the 5x5 grid, we can go and add some custom splits if you want to do further warping adjustments. So for example, I'll click on the crosshair split here, add a split just in his armpit, and then I can warp that area a little bit more easily around his shoulder and things like that. I'll create another crosshair split down here in his other armpit and then use the anchor points to twist and distort the pattern so it looks a little bit more natural in the photo. With your warping adjustments complete, whether you just use the default warping preset, one of the custom grids, or you added your own splits to the mix, we'll just press the check mark to confirm those changes. Now the pattern is blending a little bit better, but what's making it not look very realistic is that there is a consistent graphic going over the different folds in the subject shirt. For example, we have this one graphic that is visible on both the outer pocket as well as the inside edge of the shirt, which just is impossible. So for this photo, I'm going to select the different pocket squares as well as the collar of the shirt all the way down and remove the pattern from those areas. I went and selected these areas with the pen tool, but you could use something like the quick selection tool if you would like. But I'm going to go ahead and load that selection that I created previously with the pen tool and continue from there. With the areas selected that I do not want the pattern to appear in, I'll click on that rasterize pattern layer. And while that selection is active, I'll click on the layer mask to apply that selection. Since this is the opposite of what I want, I'll press command or control I on that layer mask to invert that area. And now that looks a little bit better to me. Now, the final thing to help us blend this into the photo is that if I look at the graphics, there's no texture applied on top of the graphics besides what is now visible through those graphics because of blend if. However, we can use a high pass filter to apply a sharpening adjustment based on the textures of the shirt so that they appear visible within the visible areas of our pattern as well. To do that super easily, I'll click on the image layer at the bottom of the layer stack, press command or control J to duplicate it, and then bring it within the group here and place it at the top of the stack. So it's within the group that has the layer mask, but it's above all of the layers within that group. Now to create a high pass filter based on this layer, I'll go up to filter and then down here to other and high pass. Zooming into the photo here, we want to increase the radius so that we can see all of those little details. You don't want to go crazy with this because this is what will appear on your graphics. So I'll bring this down to a more reasonable level. Something like this looks good and I'll click OK. Now to blend this into the image, I'll change the layer blending mode down here to linear light. Since this is affecting the entire shirt and I only want it to affect the graphics, I'll right click on that high pass layer and go to create clipping mask, assuming that it is directly above the rasterize pattern, which contains all of the graphics that appear on our shirt. I'll rename this layer to texture. When you're working with a pattern that has more visible areas, this layer will be more dominant in view. But if I turn it on and off, you can see a very slight difference in texture that is added to the visible areas of our pattern. Before I add my final lighting effects, there are just a few buttons that I missed. So I'm going to refine those here by clicking on the rasterize pattern layer mask. And with the brush tool painting black, I can just manually mask away the pattern from those buttons just with a few simple brush strokes. 
Now the final effect that might be worthwhile to blend your pattern in is to add some selective contrast. So clicking on the group, I'm going to create a new curves adjustment layer and place it at the top above the group. That way it will be able to affect everything within the group. For this photo, I'll just add a bunch of contrast, bringing down the shadows and increasing the highlights, maybe bring that up a little more, something like that. Now, since I want it to only appear in selective areas around my subject shirt, what I'm going to do is click on the layer mask of the curves adjustment layer, press Command or Control I to invert it. But to make sure that I only color inside of the lines, I'll hold Command or Control and click on the layer mask of the group layer to select the visible areas from that mask. And with the curves adjustment layer mask selected while this selection is active, I'll activate the brush tool and painting white with a soft round brush, I can just go and add some contrast around the subject's shoulders and things like that just to make the photo pop a little bit more and it will only be affecting the shirt because of our active selection. Pressing Command or Control D to deselect that, we now have successfully added a custom pattern and color to our subject shirt. That contrast just makes it pop a little bit more and here is our full before and after here. And if there are any little areas such as around the collar where there's a little showing up, we can just touch up our group layer mask with the brush tool and with a decent hardness of brush such as 85%, you can just paint over any leftover edges that weren't filled in from your original selection. Okay, so I know that was a lot to remember, which is why I created a free PDF lesson cheat sheet covering every step that we talked about today. I also threw in the same pattern that I use in this video so you can create the exact same thing that I made here. You can grab all of that and the cheat sheet in the description below if you're interested. But now that you know how to apply a pattern into your images, if you haven't watched my previous video on using AI to create new patterns for Photoshop, you definitely need to check that one out next. Just click the video right here to watch that one and I hope to see you there.